Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to sit down and play with a ton of new makeup products. I have a lot that I've purchased, drugstore and high-end. I have some PR and I wanna get back into it. I have enough stuff to do like four or five trying new makeup videos and I'm a little bit behind so we're gonna play catch up. So I'm gonna be focusing in on the new Danessa Myricks blushes. I have not even touched these yet but I am so excited to try these so I'm gonna probably try a few of these and then I have a ton of other products but as always I will link everything in my description box that I use today if you enjoy first impression videos give this video a thumbs up and if you enjoy makeup content go ahead and subscribe I would love to have you and let's go ahead and get into it Alright, so before we get into the makeup, I wanted to go over my thoughts on a few perfumes. I picked up a couple in store that actually surprised me at Ulta, and then again, I picked up some at Target. So I want to start off with Ulta. If you guys want me to do an Ulta haul, let me know. I know I usually do Sephora hauls, but I went into Ulta to do just like content for TikTok the other day, and I spent about 500 bucks which this is why we don't go into store because I was like, ooh, what's this, what's this? So if you want a haul, I can do that. But I did really shockingly like this perfume from Ariana Grande. So this is the blush mod. I picked up the full size in the vanilla mod offline and I just didn't really love it. It was similar to Cloud, but I like Cloud better. So when I smelled this in store, I thought this was gonna be like headache inducing, really floral, and it definitely is floral but it's much more like bright and fresh. Perfect for like the spring and summer coming up. I've been wearing this a little bit here and there and it doesn't give me a headache, it hangs on. So if you like like a fresh floral, very sweet, I think you would like this. I did also pick up this one. Now I smelled this a while ago and I didn't buy it and then when I went back, I kept going back and just like sniffing this and I put it on my skin and I was like, I'm gonna buy it. So this is the Charlie D'Amelio Born Dreamer. She's like a huge TikTok star. I think the packaging is really cute to be honest, but this smells really, really nice, fresh. Again, it gives me similar vibes to the Ariana Grande, but this one I would say a little bit more musky, so it melts into your skin. I wanna say I'm smelling like peach. So I really like this. I went ahead and picked it up. And then Target has a new brand called Finery. So Finery basically dupes or makes imitation fragrances of popular high-end perfumes like Tom Ford Lost Cherry, Santal, also I think Flower Bomb. I mean, there's kind of a lot going on. So I went in store and I did a TikTok. I'll probably post it on YouTube as well, just giving you my thoughts on every scent. But I personally have purchased two different scents, but I got one in the perfume and the mist. So they have mist and perfumes. This is the perfume bottle. So this one is sweet on the outside and it definitely gives me Billie Eilish, but a little bit more fresh. I have the Billie Eilish and I really like it. It's like a cozy, warm scent. So this one I got in the spray. It's actually downstairs in my car. And then this I got in the perfume when I went in store. And then I also picked up Before the Rainbow. This one is very fresh, very aquatic. It's giving me a little bit of like a unisex vibe and it almost on the skin smells like like fresh, clean laundry. I don't think that I would want the perfume in this one, but a body spray fresh out of the shower, it works for me. So these are the two that I picked up. I do wanna get Magnetic Candy, which is sort of like a grape soda, love don't be shy, but they didn't have it in store, so I'll order that. But these are the ones I picked up. If you wanna know my thoughts on like all of the finery fragrances I will link that TikTok down below but I wanted to go over this because your girl just bought quite a few new perfumes and I'm really liking them all even though they're all different all right, so I've got you zoomed in now. I will link those fragrances down below if you wanna check them out. But I wanna start off with this Buxom Plump Shot. Now this is a collagen infused lip serum and it comes in a bunch of different colors. So I grabbed out the color Lingerie, which is like a beautiful baby pink. I like that these actually have a pigment. I tried one of these on the other day and I used to be like a lip plumping junkie, but I'm telling you, I was like, ow. Ow. like I'm not used to it. Uh, I think since getting lip filler, I'm like, I don't use these products very much. I like a, like a slight, you know, minty feel, but this really was hurting. So let's just torture ourselves and apply it again. 
I think I'm just honestly a sissy because I have lip filler and so I just haven't used these products in a long time. If you want a plumping, sort of like soft balm look, it's not really glossy, but it's more of like a soft balm look with a lot of pigment, you may like these. Uh, so let's see what this does for my lips, but I get a little scared because, I don't know, my lips are already quite big and when you add plumping things, sometimes it's like, whoa girl, they're already big. Okay, so for eyes, I really wanna try out these Kiss Impress Press on falsies. So no glue needed, press and go. So essentially you pop these on, you don't have to apply any glue or anything, and then they're supposed to be like the under lash, do it yourself lash extensions. I got this, it was like, I think one of the last ones, and I got this. So I wanna try this out, and I'm not gonna do a bunch of eye makeup, just because I have a ton of complexion to test out. So we're gonna focus on complexion, but I'm gonna go into my Makeup by Mario. This is like my favorite palette for just like mattes. And I'm gonna mix these two shades, and I'm just gonna dust this in my crease. Lately, I'm just feeling like like, I'm not super excited to play with like really crazy eyeshadow palettes and do cut creases and dark smoky eyes. I think maybe I'm a little burnt out from holiday time when I was just reviewing a ton of palettes. So I'm going to sort of try to mix it up a little bit more and do lighter looks because sometimes I just am not in the creative mood. And what I feel the best in most days is like what I'm gonna do today, which is pretty, pretty easy, but I just gotta look at myself in the mirror and look how big my lips look. I mean, that stuff definitely works, but I feel like, holy crap. But I'm gonna go in and curl my lashes. So with this product from Kiss, I don't think that you're supposed to put mascara on. Like, I think you're just supposed to put it on the underside of your lash. So these lashes come in different styles. For instance, this one has the natural and the wispy, and then I got these in curly. And within each pack, there's different lengths. So this one has the medium and long, which would be here, and then the extra long. So these are the wispy natural. And I think I wanna start maybe with that. Pluck a cluster from the tray, place the cluster underneath your natural lashes, and when I'm looking at this, it doesn't look like she has any mascara on. Squeeze clusters and natural lashes together. That's it, like there's no glue or anything. I don't know if this is something that I feel like would last if you're like getting married or you're going swimming or anything like that, but for every day, I am curious how long this will hang on, so I'll leave a pinned comment uh, because by the time I get this video up, it'll be hours, hours later. So let's start off with the medium. Should we start off? No, we should start off on the outside. So let's, okay, let's start off with the extra long and let's hope this works. I zoomed you in even more, so hopefully you can see. This also comes with the kit or one of the kits I bought, but I'm actually gonna use my favorite, which is the Velour. I will link this down below, but this, has changed the game for lashes for me. So I'm gonna go in and pick up one of the clusters that is in the extra long. And to apply this, I'm using my magnifying mirror. So you're supposed to put it under your lashes, like not on the rim underneath, like where you would tight line, but your actual lashes. Okay. Well, here we go. That just came off, so, and now it's stuck to my tweezers. So let's grab another cluster. I definitely feel like there's gonna be a learning curve here. Okay, so here's the next cluster. Okay, so are we on there? I have like no lashes like on the way outer corner of my eye, which makes this not the easiest. So I'm gonna take this now and push really hard to clamp with my lashes. It's on there, maybe it just looks weird because I don't have anything else on. Let's go in next with the long, and I'm gonna put this right next to it. So it definitely like grabs on. I'm just wondering like how much this is really gonna stay. So I'm just fusing it now. I also feel like this is really hard because I have blonde lashes. So it's just really hard to blend in with my white lashes. I'm just gonna go straight in with the medium next and maybe do two mediums. 
feel like I always struggle here too because like my eye curves. Okay, so I have that on. Okay, and then for the final section, I'm going to do another medium. I like always struggle because I want to make sure that I'm like getting close. So I feel like I could have put like another lash out here. I always struggle though because I don't really have like an outer lash. Like I'm talking like right here. All right, so this is as good as we're gonna get on the one eye. Just keep in mind that I am learning. I'm not a pro. I feel like if you were somebody that does like do-it-yourself lashes all the time, this would be cakewalk for you. All right, so lashes are on. This is what they look like. I just played around and I feel like if you're somebody that does this all the time, you will fly through this. This is something that I think is super convenient. It took me a while because I'm not used to it, but it really did apply pretty easily. You definitely have to fuse them as you go, but I wanna know how long this hangs on. If you've used these, how many hours of wear do you get before they start falling off? I think it's a really innovative product and I would like to see them offer like more for a lower price. To actually have to purchase these and apply them every day, I feel like it would get pricey. I can't remember exactly what I paid, but I wanna say like 10 to $15 per pack. I do like the way they look. I have an eye twitch, by the way, if you notice that. Let's just not talk about it. Let's go into skin. I'm just going to prep my skin with my Freck moisturizer. It's like on its last leg, and I feel like I just just got this but this is one of my most used moisturizers so next I want to try this new product I picked up from Tarte Tarte has been coming out with a lot of products so I grabbed this glow light skin filter I think they're just trying to dupe Charlotte Tilbury I mean who isn't I got the shade glimmer and it has a wand applicator so I thought we could try this under our foundation and just see how it compares. I still really like the e.l.f. more than anything. I guess I could swatch this for you. I'm a little rusty on my reviews. So it looks like it's more like the Charlotte Tilbury in terms of how much glow, but it does also look a little bit more pigmented than the Charlotte Tilbury, so let's blend this out. I only put this product on the high points just because Otherwise, I look way too textured. This is more on par with the Charlotte Tilbury in terms of how much luminosity it has. I feel like this is more like the Charlotte Tilbury than the e.l.f., but it does give a nice glow. It does feel hydrating though, like there's a tack to it, so it's not one that I would smother like all over my pores. Even if I blend it out, I think this would be pretty as an actual highlighter. So before we go in with foundation, I'm gonna take a little bit of my Hourglass Vanish Airbrush, just in my T-zone, because we're working with a lot of like cream, glowy products. So I want to make sure that I'm going to have some like smoothing and oil control. For foundation, I'm still testing out the KVD Beauty Good Apple Serum Foundation. I did a video on this, but I wanna continue to use it. I have the shade Medium 30. I wanna see how this plays with cream products and try using less. So here is two pumps. I also picked up this brush. This is from Young Blood, and it is the YB6. It looks like it was gonna be similar to one of my favorite brushes, which is the Sonia G Face One. This was pretty pricey though, like 40 some dollars, so we will see. So I'm just going to blend into the skin and start applying, and I wanna to try to use less because I feel like last time I really used too much product. So this is what the KVD foundation looks like. I do really like it. I think it can get heavy though, so less is more. It has a great coverage, but I always tend to probably use too much to cover my redness, so I try to use less today. You could also use a sponge to make it more natural, and I do feel like I'm seeing that tart glow on my forehead, which I really like. So if you wanna see my full thoughts on the KVD foundation, I will have my video linked down below. But I wanna go in next with this from Tarte. So I picked it up, which is the Sculpt Tape 
contour. They did come out with blushes just recently, so I wanna pick up maybe like one of those to try. But I've used this a couple times. Of course, they're trying to dupe Charlotte Tilbury. I got the shade Cool Bronze, so it has the same applicator where you can twist it to lock it and then open it. So let me swatch this for you. So I've used it a couple times and I feel like it's not as pigmented as other contour products I've tried. And when I purchased this off QVC, it came with this brush. It was like a duo. So we're gonna go ahead and try it out. I'm going to just dot on the side here and use the brush. It's not a extremely pigmented product. So I almost feel like you may want to go darker than what you think you need. But I mean, I just blended that out and I almost feel like I didn't apply anything. Hmm. I can see a little bit of a contour, but it's very slight. And I sort of wish I would have gotten the warm because I almost feel like this cool bronze just gives a weird look. Almost like, it almost looks like a grayish red undertone. So I'm going in with the second layer. Even with two layers, I don't know. It's just not super impactful. I'm gonna go back in with that first brush just to clean up. So this is what two layers looks like on one side and then nothing on the other. I just don't really love the color or the formula. I don't wanna have to apply multiple layers. I much prefer the LYS or the Rare Beauty. This may be a good option for beginners just because I feel like it's not overly pigmented so you're not going to end up with like crazy amount of contour. Is that NASCAR Teddy? You know, he's something that I really haven't thought about recently, but here we are. So I've applied the chart to both sides. It's a very subtle effect, but I almost feel like it's looking splotchy. I'm gonna try to zoom you in, but I just feel like my foundation looks splotchy back here. I'm gonna probably put in a couple photos from my phone to show you, but I haven't used any powder, so that really shouldn't be happening. I'm just going to remove and then go back in with my foundation and let's see what happens. So I'm just taking more of the KBD foundation. Okay, so now that I reapplied that, I'm going in with the LYS and a clean brush. This is super pigmented, so I like to work off my hand. I am obsessed with this BK Beauty brush. This is the 109. It is so nice for just any liquid products. This LYS is so pigmented, but it's really easy to work with. I probably went a little crazy around my hairline, but we'll fix that. Okay, so now that we have the contour on, I wanna try out the new Urban Decay Quickie 24 Hour Wear Concealer. So I have the shade 20NN. It has a sponge on one side, which, oh, it's not a sponge, I'm sorry, it's a brush. Does it go up or no? I don't think so, it just looks like a small brush. It has to twist up, correct? Huh, okay, I'm not sure but it has a little brush on the end. Now this, the shade is really light. I chose this out and I think I chose way too light. They sent this in PR, but I don't like a dark under eye, so I'd rather it be light than dark, but this is like really light, so I messed up there, but we'll try it anyways. Feels very moussey and pretty, I would say dry, like just it's feeling on my under eye. It's definitely not feeling like super hydrating or skincare-like, so hopefully it doesn't look bad. I'm going to use a sponge from Sephora Collection and start blending this out. Feels like this dries pretty fast. Yeah, this dries quickly which is not my favorite, and I don't really feel like I got a lot of coverage. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little bit more, and honestly, when products dry so quickly that you have a hard time moving them, that's definitely not a favorite of mine. I don't think this is like the most fast drying ever, but it definitely is one of those that you gotta move quickly. Okay, because it is so light, we're looking a little bit 
just, I don't know, strange. So I'm taking my foundation brush to kind of blend in between the concealer and contour. Okay, so before we go in with any powder, I wanna try one of these Danessa Myricks blushes. So this was sent to me in PR, which I was super excited about. I actually purchased one color off Sephora. It was available, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, and then they pulled it, and I was like, what's going on with all these releases? So there are six different colors. These are available now. It looks like they all run pretty warm. There's definitely a few or a couple like more neutral and then a deeper shade, but these are like reddish orange. So let's start off with a neutral shade first. Well, neutral for me, which would be rose and brunch. So here is the packaging. It's like a mini of her blurring balm powder that I use as a primer. So this is what it looks like. Let me swatch it. It feels pretty much identical. It definitely feels like a cream, like barely any pressure on the skin. Yep it blends into like a powdery feel. So if you just swatch the product, it's definitely very thin and has that cream feel. But then when you start buffing, it turns into like a powder. So it's like a cream to powder, very, very thin. So to apply this, I'm gonna use my sponge and just dip in to the product and then work off the inside of my hand. It looks pretty pigmented. So I'm just gonna go in. I wanna see how this does over liquids and then we'll try it over powder. Okay, so let me zoom you in. That's a really pretty shade. I thought this was, well, this is one of the more safe colors. When I say safe, like not bright, but it's a really beautiful flush. So I'm gonna go ahead and try another color on this side. This is Jubilee which looks terracotta neutral. Okay, so they might appear brighter on the skin because when you look in the jar, it looks like terracotta, but then when you blend it, it kind of becomes a little bit more like bright peachy. Okay, so you have the rosé and brunch on this side and then Jubilee on this side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and even them out and add both shades to each side. Then we will set and then I'll go in and try to play with another shade on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my face. I'm gonna use my Huda Beauty in my T-zone. And I have these cute little powder puffs that were sent in PR. This one's really great for like right under the eyes. And I'm just gonna set under my eyes. I love this puff just because I feel like you can get really targeted. I have the other one in my purse. So to set the areas I put cream products on, I'm gonna use my Dior Powder No Powder. This I think is getting reformulated, which why I feel like a lot of people love this product. So I have the shade 2N. I'm gonna take some on my hand and then just press it in to my skin or take some on my puff and then press it in. I feel like you don't want too much of this, but it really is a special powder. If you deal with like patching and lifting like I do, this is my go-to that doesn't disrupt cream products. So before we go in with another Danessa blush, I'm gonna go in with the Rare Beauty highlighter. So I picked up the color Exhilarate. I actually got this in PR after I bought it, so I'm definitely donating those, but I am going to apply this to the tops of my cheeks. I'm not crazy into highlighter lately, and this one I do feel like doesn't stick the best, if that makes sense. It's pretty but I feel like it kind of goes places I don't want it to go, even though I know like so many people are like loving it. Like it's pretty when I turn, but I feel like, I don't know, I'm just not going crazy over it like everyone else is. Okay, so I'm nervous to do this just because I had issues with the Charlotte Tilbury over powder, but I wanna try another shade from Danessa over powder. So this is Golden Hour, which is really bright. So I'm gonna take this brush, BK Beauty 112, load the brush up, but then again, swirl most of it off on the inside of my hand. I wanna tread lightly here. I'm using stippling motions. That's a really pretty shade. 
I want to try on the other side the shade Prima Donna. So this looks really bright, but it looks more pink toned. So I just loaded my, oh yeah. So this is probably the most pink of all of them. Just build up on this side. Okay, I really like these blushes. I feel like my favorite is the Golden Hour, which is on this side, but I do also like Prima Donna. But let's go in with one more. I know I'm crazy, I'm trying to use all of them. I wanna use the peachy shade Bellini and just go over both and see what that looks like. So I quickly took the puff from Huda Beauty and just pressed over to calm these down, but I wanna go in with Bellini. This is the one I originally bought. It is a bright peachy color. And start applying. Oh, this is beautiful. That is a beautiful shade. So this is similar to Golden Hour, but less red and lighter, just more like an orange peach. But the formula, I almost feel like works better over powder than it did on liquid. Okay, so I think we have enough blush for a lifetime. I'm just gonna go in with this puff just around the edges, just to soften it, but really beautiful. I think a lot of you will love that formula. The shades are gorgeous. I just wanted to demo as many as possible, but let's go ahead and finish off with lips. Okay, so for lip liner, I have the one size in Rent Do. I know I always wear a brown lip liner, but I just love them. And this is one of my only new, I think my only new lip liner right now. Okay, I really like this formula. I already have another one in my cart just to get like a lighter shade, but I wanna go in with one of the Hourglass lipsticks. So they came out with these lipsticks and I got them in PR and it was when I wasn't posting. So I have a few here to swatch. This one is pretty bright. It's called Lotus. I don't know, it might be pretty. I have a lot going on on the cheeks. I also have the shade Larch. That's a weird shade. Okay, that's gonna be too deep for this look. So I think we're gonna go with the last one, which is Tide. And I feel like a lot of people would really love this shade. So maybe I'll go in with Tide first. This is Tide, although it's pretty cool tone. Let's just go for it. It's like a light nude leaning cool. Okay, that's a beautiful color. I like that the formula feels hydrating, but it's not thick. It's not like clumping up. The one thing that's gonna drive me nuts though, very much like the Vice lipsticks, is that you have to have it turn the right way to close the component. You know, I'm in a hurry, I'm throwing things around and I'm usually not like paying attention, so that will drive me crazy. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of that brighter shade, which is called Lotus, just to tie in with the cheeks. Okay, and to finish off, I want to use this new Makeup Fix Setting Spray by Thrive Cosmetics. They sent this over and I am really enjoying this. Oil-free setting spray that instantly locks in makeup with a lightweight, refreshing feel. So I wore this, well I've been wearing this, and it definitely gives you a nice sort of like glow. I don't wanna say it's heavy, it's kind of how like a MAC Fix Plus would. I like the sprayer on it, it's not heavily scented. I don't think it's going to lock your makeup in like the Charlotte Tilbury or Urban Decay, but if you just want something to melt your powders in, make your skin look a little bit more refreshed, I think you would really like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray this and I am going to cover my lashes just because I don't want that to interfere with how long they last. It has a light scent, but it's very, very light. The mister is nice. It's not overly aggressive, but not one that you have to like get right up on your face. And I feel like it does just kind of melt your powders in, make you look a little bit more hydrated. 
Okay guys, so here's my finished makeup trying out a bunch of new products and I wanna go over my thoughts. We have some hits and some that I'm just not into. So starting off with the Buxom, if you want a tinted plumping lip balm slash gloss, I think you would really like these. They work. I was looking at my lips and I was like, whoa. So if you really want something that's going to plump your lips up, has that minty feel but with pigment, I think these are nice. These have a thin texture, they have that tingle, so just know that it's a little bit more intense than let's say their glosses and not quite as shiny as their glosses. But I think the colors are pretty. If I needed lip plumping, I would be all on this, but honestly, I feel like my lips are already too big, so I don't need anything to make them bigger. I'm honestly shocked, but pretty impressed with the Kiss Impress press on falsies. It really is just press and go. So I think this is a really nice product for convenience, but in terms of cost, I don't know how much you would spend if you were using these every single day. But if you wanna pay for convenience, you wanna throw them on and be out the door, I think they're pretty good. I've had them on now for about an hour, so as the day goes on, I'll let you know if they start falling off. They feel really comfortable, and they do have a few different styles. So you can definitely check out I think there's like natural wispy curled and I there might be another one So I will leave links down below to where you can pick those up, but honestly, I'm pretty impressed moving on to the Tarte glow light I actually really like this. I like that. It's in a wand format I think it's just easier to use and it has quite a bit of glow This would be a great option for those of you that like a formula like this to put on top of your foundation Because this really I think has more glow than the Charlotte Tilbury but I felt like I could see it on my forehead even after applying a full coverage foundation So I'm interested to keep testing this out This is always going to be a product that I'm going to keep up here Never all over the face and I will try this over my foundation and see how it plays with powder and liquids and all of those things But today I was a little bit scarred by having to remove my contour and all that So I just kind of skipped an extra step that may jack up my makeup again. I'm still testing out the KVD foundation. I love the packaging and the formula feels very lightweight on the skin but this can get heavy very quickly. It has a lot of coverage. It definitely leans natural matte in my opinion, but it can get really cakey and heavy looking around pores or problem areas. Less is more with this. I do think it's beautiful. It wears pretty well, but I don't think it's, you know, crazy long wear like they claim. When I think of crazy long wear, I'm thinking of like Estee Lauder double wear, but I think it's a good formula. You just have to remember less is more and it's not a natural looking formula because it has so much coverage. Unfortunately, my least favorite thing of the day has to be this sculpt tape contour from Tarte. It is just too sheer and I even saw, this is so shady, I don't, I don't even know who it was, but I saw an influencer that was on the Dubai trip using this and she used like a couple layers and then she was like, I need a little bit more snatching and she went in with another contour. So for me, I was like, ooh, that just shows you that it's very sheer. I did two layers and I feel like, I don't know, the color was off and I barely got any sculpting and it was getting patchy and lifting on liquid. So for me, this is just a pass, just a product that I just wouldn't recommend. There's so many other options. I'm not quite sure how I feel about the Urban Decay Stay Naked Concealer. I feel like the shade is throwing me off because it's so light. The formula is very thin and it feels dry. So it's one that I feel like you almost don't even need to powder. I always do, but if you're someone that doesn't, Definitely don't need to with this. When I'm looking at my makeup now, I feel like my under eyes look nice and smooth. Definitely a drier formula, but after I powdered and did the rest of my makeup, I do like the way that it looks. I just think maybe I need a darker shade. As I said before, the Rare Beauty highlighter is pretty. I love the packaging, and I think it's a nice formula, but I'm not blown away. I'm actually surprised, but I'm liking the Charlotte Tilbury more than this, and I think it's just because this is baked, but it's not like baked gelée with that, I guess, 
guess, creaminess, whereas the Charlotte Tilbury is a powder, but it has a nice creaminess to it, so it really sticks where I buff it in. So I think this is nice, but just not wowing me. Hands down, my favorite thing from today has to be these blushes, and I'm so happy to report that. I was worried because I heard, you know, cream, balm, powder, and I didn't know how these were gonna go. These are absolutely beautiful. I love these so much, and I think they work better over powder than on an unset face, but they worked with both. I think these are stunning. They were super easy to use, very pigmented, and they give you a nice glow, like lit from within, but they're not sticky or heavy. When I feel my face, it's like a soft matte feel, so these highly, highly, highly recommend. If you can get your hands on them, I also highly recommend these from Huda. I like both of them. This one is great to just go over large areas of the face, but this I use the most because I can just touch up, really snatch in my nose contour, and it makes it super easy to powder around creams like cream blush, so these are a win for me as well. Still absolutely loving the one size lip liner formula. I want to get more shades. This formula is pretty stiff in a typical pencil at first, but once you warm it up, it does give me a similar vibe to the Pat McGrath, maybe a little bit more pigmented, but it hangs on all day. I also appreciate that it doesn't bunch up in the corners of my mouth, which can happen with a lot of lip liners. So this is definitely a win for me and I wanna get more shades. And then I do really like the Hourglass lipstick formula. Packaging feels a little bit light. I don't wanna say cheap, but for the price point, it's not wowing me, but the formula is beautiful. It has a nice shine. It's not like slipping around and it's not thick, but it does feel hydrating, but with a lot of pigment. My favorite shade has to be the neutral shade. I just feel like it's a beautiful, like, nude, but more cool tone. So this is definitely a standout to me. I don't think I would tell you to go out and buy tons of these, but maybe one shade if you really want it and you know you'll wear it a lot because the formula is really beautiful. And then last but not least, I'm really enjoying the Instant Makeup Fix from Thrive Cosmetics. I feel like it is like a MAC Fix Plus, but it's a little bit more hydrating and it doesn't feel sticky at all. Sometimes these sprays have a ton of glycerin in them and they really feel heavy and sticky and this does not. But this one just gives me a nice glow without making me feel greasy, sticky, or oily. It does say that it's oil-free. Now, I don't know if this is going to extend your makeup wear like the Charlotte Tilbury or Urban Decay, but if you want a setting spray to melt your powders in, just make Make your skin look more hydrated and healthy, I think you would like this. Okay guys, so I think that's everything for this trying new makeup. I tried a lot of new products I'm excited to keep testing and then a couple that I'm like, I'm good. I don't need to use you again. So I will link everything down below that I used today, including like brushes and all of the tools. Let me know what you think about the products I tried today. Have you tried any of these products? I would love to know your feedback. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I hope you stick around and subscribe. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.